Hello everyone. So, blog style video this time because, long story short, I went to a concert this weekend and I don't actually have a lot of time to put a script together. So, thus I am doing a vlog style review discussing the concert of which I went. Specifically, I went to see Band Made at the Crystal Ballroom, technically the McMinimans Crystal Ballroom in downtown Portland. So, um, this is my first time actually going to the Crystal Ballroom. So, we're going to talk about the experience going to the Crystal Ballroom as well, in addition to the actual uh, set that I went to see. So, um, Crystal Ballroom itself. Uh, for to mention, um, it's this is a very historic building. Um, the original building was built in 1913, so we're talking not just like so like 110 years old. Yeah, like next year is going to be its 111st birthday, uh, or it will, it will have its 111st birthday. So like big deal. Um, now that I, now that I think about it, um, oh, sort of the construction started in 1913. Um, construction finished and opened in 1914, so next year technically is the 110th anniversary of its opening. Um, it had been somewhat less active in um, from the 70s through the 90s, and then got reopened as um, by McMinimins in 97. And we've been serving as a concert venue since then. And so the venue itself, um, ground level is the actual, is where you go in. Pretty much everything for the, the actual Crystal Volume Ballroom concert venue. We're not talking about the nearby Crystal Hotel. Um, is, or formerly known as the Hotel Alma. Um, second story is the bar. It is, um, and it was just called Lola's room. Uh, because it's basically just a standard bar. There's also the ground floor. There is a, is a separate restaurant called the Ringler's bar named after the person who had the building built in the first place. But that is not accessible through the main entrance to the Crystal Ballroom. It's again, second floor is um, is Lola's room, which is a standard bar. Um, it does have a have a smaller concert venue, like uh, Decemberists performed there in the past. Um, that was not where the concert was. That I went to for um, band made and said this is up on the highest level, the third floor, which is the actual crystal ballroom itself, which in turn has a smaller bar area plus uh, basically a, a window with limited food and, and non alcoholic drinks and that sort of thing. And probably one of the big things I was saying that, that's significant about the crystal ballroom as a place to see a concert is specifically so the floor is what's called a quote-unquote is a sprung floor also called a floating floor um so it is which means that the force up is kind of a raised floor and what this means from a concert standpoint particularly going to see a rock show is while this is a wood floor or you're standing on a wood floor it moves. It has vertical movement up and down, um, which can, to a degree, feel disconcerting if you're in a if you're on the third floor of a building and you're in a rock concert and everyone is jumping up and down, or you're around a bunch of people who are jumping up and down or just very actively dancing, um, which some people were during portions of the concert, and. 
you eventually get used to it. I was like, so there was an opening act, and then for we had about an hour set, and then band made like hour forty five minute set, band made, then went for two hours, and over the course of that, I got used to it. Probably the next time I go to see a concert there, um, I may be like, oh, okay, I'm I'm used to it now. Maybe it may take several concerts to go there as far as going there to get accustomed to the floor movement, but it is it is something that you have to that you will notice if you've never been to a concert at the Crystal Ballroom before. So that's the first part. Um, second is, is this is like McMinimins has like one of the things they do is they like to, as when they set up their as venues, they get old buildings and when they redo them as a bar, they generally try to maintain to their credit, the character of the building. Even if you're not like, uh, even if you're of the opinion, oh, they are a chain of brew pubs, basically, and they are like not necessarily like, like they're a local business, they're a local independent business, but they're still kind of like a relatively big business kind of thing. There is still the sense of like when you go to the Kennedy McMinimans Kennedy School, when you go to the Crystal Ballroom, when you go to one of the earth dude like the Aladdin, I think they run the Aladdin theater um when like when you go to these various locations you still do have a degree of sense of what the building that was there before is even if they've redecorated it and redone some painting and that sort of thing in their own way it maintains the vibe of what it once was so there is a lot so it maintains that real sense of Turn of the last century architecture with the roundels and that sort of thing on the walls, um, electric crystal chandelier um, in the main ballroom area, um, that sort of thing. Um, with this also, like there, while well, there is an elevator that you can use to go between floors, um, there is like also like the stairwell is it, it's got a vintage handrail to it. Uh, has a real like the stairwell itself is kind of narrow for like the main entrance up, so it, it has that very sort of cozy, confined sense to it. This also means that in the concert venue itself on the main floor, it's not like they have really overhauled things to like stick a big the two like some heavy duty HVAC in there. So there is also it, it, it can get it can get warm to make a long story short short it can get quite warm up in there um it wasn't like heat stroke or anything like that but it was a different sense of like hey i'm like the, they have a uh water cooler area set in the back um over by the uh, non-alcoholic food area and drinks area and that sort of thing there's free water available never ran out over the course of the night always kept that well stocked which was great uh those different sense of like over the course of the evening of like i'm gonna Oh, we're we're doing stage banter right now. I'm gonna um head back and uh have some water because it's it's getting toasty. Also good in general because your throat gets dry when you're shouting and and going woo over the course of a concert, which you do at a rock show. So that's also good. Um, helps you maintain your energy. So, like that that's the vibe of the big minimums crystal ballroom side of things. I do wish I'd actually taken some pictures more pictures of the venue itself before the concert proper started. So um, next up, uh, the opening act, which was not mentioned in any of the places where I went, like getting ready to go at the concert. It just said, band made live at the Crystal Ballroom, um, concert starts at eight, doors open at seven. I'm like, okay. So it's, it's I feel it's just gonna be band maids, probably might be about a couple hours or so, that sort of thing. Um, they did not mention that Starcrawler was going to be the opening act. I do not fault McMinimins for this because this is on the Live Nation page. This is on the Last FM page for the concert, for the event. It is on, it's, this is how it's listed on the Bands in Town or was listed on the Bands in Town listing. It, that Bands in Town is actually had to correct it now. Um, so... I fault Live Nation for this, for for failing to adequately advertise that there was an opening act. That said, 
I do get the sense from Starcock. We're, we're not the first stop in this tour on the, the West Coast leg of the tour by any means. This is where Starcrawler was opening. So I do get the sense that uh, Starcrawler was well aware that they weren't on the bill, um, or at least not on the website. And so while they had merch, like, like in fact, I, I noticed their merch at the mer at the merch table in hindsight, but I didn't put two and two together. Otherwise, I might have gotten their shirt, um, but I didn't because I it didn't I didn't realize. So, um, Starcrawler did a pretty decent job of recognizing the fact that oh, like unlike say like the other band I've been to are they had an opening act, which was when we went to see Iron Maiden and they had Dream Theater as an opening act. Dream Theater was advertised on the bill. The audience was also of a crowd who was like ex into a, like in the overlap of they're into Dream Theater and they're also into Iron Maiden or they're into Iron Maiden. Dream Theater is also metal. So you know what? We're, we're, we're down with this, that sort of thing. Um, whereas Starcrawler... No offense to Starcrawler. I enjoyed their music. I am going to listen to some of the rest of some of their full albums um, th through uh, either Tidal or Apple Music and maybe pick up some of their stuff. I enjoyed what I listened I in the live concert. It was, was all right. But I, it is a definite, like, not the... It's not quite as heavy a overlap on the Venn diagram here necessarily. Like Bandmade, like if you're gonna pick a band that would go with Bandmade, I would almost go for something like again, Starcrawler, great. I enjoyed them. But it feels like something a little almost goth-ish or maybe seen not nece not necessarily pop punk um but again they're all right they're fine um it didn't quite hit like as as much as I think again not again them not them not being advertised also probably didn't help but I get the vibe from the performance that Star Car was like we are aware that we're not on the bill that was the original bill posted for the concert so to speak um and so the audience isn't expecting us necessarily so they're not going to get hyped the way that we would if we were on the bill and we were able to draw some of our fans in as well um, from through something other than word of mouth and so they did a pretty good job of like the crowd was not dead in fact they were certainly very fired up by the end of their set not just because the new bandmate was coming up but it did have a certain degree of like Audience going, wait, huh? Who are these? Oh, okay. Um, and then building up over the course of the thing, I did. I never quite noticed a, oh hey, we're band, like oh hey, we're Starcrawler, with a, and here's each of the members of the band introduced and does a solo thing, kind of bit. Whereas with say Bandmade, because of the hard rock, heavy metal, made cafe vibe of their sets, not just in terms of, oh, stage cost, oh, their, their stage attire, but also by incorporating it in their stage banter with including um, made games and that sort of thing. Um, not, to, of course, along with the, the, the Moe Moe Kuhn um, incantation and all of that at um, in there. That provides a mechanism for, if you are new to band made, we are in, this is my mechanism for we are introducing each members of the band and not just in the sense of oh they're playing like play a solo on their instrument and that sort of thing but also presenting their stage character and that sort of thing 
We didn't really get anything of that from Starcrawler, but also, again, they're the opening act, shorter set. I could understand the need for economy of time in terms of how much can we, like, do we want to take a moment to say, hi, we're Starcrawler on base. We have on base Tim Franco on uh, guitar, Henry Cash on drums, and so forth and so on. I'm Arrow to Wild, so forth, and all that sort of thing. Um, I understand not going, we don't have the economy of time for that. Let's just focus on our songs and do some stage banter, banter to hype the crowd and get them ready for the, the main act, which, good job. They, they, they did it well. Uh, and then band made itself. Um, get two hours set, so it came in at eight. Concert as a whole ended at uh, 11. Really great set. Um, Crystal Ball, like, they have played larger venues even, even in the United States. They played Lollapalooza this year. Um, you can find the archive of their Lollapalooza set from uh, the Hulu stream on YouTube if you look at the right, if you do a search for it. Uh, but their set was great. While I don't know their songs well enough to necessarily do with the sing-along call and response place portions that some of the other people's audience were able to do, um, I had a really great time. They were a really great engaging act. Um, they had took advantage of how the how McMinimans had set up the stage area, the crystal ballroom area, in terms of divide it in half between an alcohol and non-alcohol area, and put a channel on the middle for also moving stuff in and out of the venue that, ready for the opening act, that this also allowed for um, band made to use that to move among the audience, and which is great, like I am always a sucker for stage venue for um, stage setups where they have that channel out in the middle that put lets the vocalist come out into the middle of the audience and gives people who are a little further back a chance to get a little more get a more closer look at members of the band, and this definitely provided a sense of that even without necessarily the same degree of elevated visibility. That was really good, um, and. Honestly, the, like in the crowd was absolutely electric. Everyone was having a great time. Um, wide range, wide age range at this concert, by the way. Um, like you had people there, like my age, mid thirties, um, parents with kids, um, younger uh, people in their twenties. Crystal Ballroom is, I should mention, a 21 and older venue. Minors cannot be present without um, their parents being in attendance. Um, some people may have been under 18 who were brought there by their parents, but the, this is, but if they were, the parents were certainly having a great time as well. There were like plenty of like clearly older metalheads, um, like people who probably saw. People who were probably in metal scene um, arguments when around the time that Ozzy was ousted from Black Sabbath and replaced with Ronnie James Dio and like people from that era in the audience and that sort of thing. Um, wide crowd between people who were caught, who were dressed up and cosplaying as maids, um, fans, long standing fans with band made t-shirts. And again, lots of metalheads, um, Iron Maiden shirt, wearing Iron Maiden shirts, Guns N' Roses t-shirts, both Guns N' Roses last tour and also like earlier Guns N' Roses tours. Um, so again, like definitely clear that 
Bed Made has gotten a degree of breakthrough similar to that that like Baby Metal has gotten, but I think that while Baby Metal got a bit of pu got pushback, to a degree because. Moa metal and Sue metal and so forth don't necessarily play instruments during the concert. On the other hand, band made like they play everything and it has given them to a degree, a sense of legit. I feels like a sense of legitimacy that I don't like they haven't had to overcome that hurdle that baby metal necessarily has had had, had to do. That's not a bad thing. That hurdle that said shouldn't have had to be there in the first place. Um, but, and ultimately, this was a really great show. I absolutely recommend if you are a like fan of like harder rock music, this is definitely a concert worth going to. Also, um, in the product endorsement, I will put the, the affiliate link in the show notes. Um, I got the loop experience, uh, earplugs for, um, hearing protection for the concert because this is a more enclosed venue. Most of the other big rock shows I've been to have been either larger venues or open air venues like, um, at the Clark County Amphitheater or a similar venue in. Seattle area and those like, because they're open air the acoustics works differently this is a smaller environment uh, closed environment so I figured a hearing protection would be worth getting it was um, in fact actually about my complaint like my one complaint with Stark the Star Car show is their sound mix and sound levels were definitely aimed more at the turn it up to 11 than to um, anything else. So like with the, with the ear, with, with the earplugs, it's a nice, small, actual thing to carry them in. Um, having those in for the actual band made portion of the set, I could clearly understand all the lyrics, um, have a clear audio on, I might clearly hear the notes for the, um, guitar parts and bass parts and that sort of thing. I may not necessarily be able to hear quite as well what the audience around me was singing along when they sang along, but otherwise like it was great. Here along fine with star crawler. It was cranked up high enough that even with hearing protection, um, I couldn't necessarily coherently tell the lyrics for a lot of their songs with some exceptions. Um, and some of the admittedly one of those exceptions was their cover of, uh, Pet Cemetery by the Ramones. And that's because I know that song well enough and enjoy it well enough that my brain can put together, like recognizes it and knows the lyrics well enough that they can just go along. They can just go along with it. Ah, <sighs> so like, that's my one complaint and probably give me the reason why we listening to the album versions of some of star crawlers stuff, because then I could actually tell what the words of the songs were that sounded pretty good otherwise. Or I could tell what the melodies of those songs were, which sounded pretty good otherwise. And that's pretty much that. Again, I recommend if you have not had the opportunity to see Band Made Live and that opportunity is made available to you, I do recommend you check that you take advantage of that and do see them live. And should they do a return trip to the Pacific Northwest, in particular Oregon, I will definitely see if I can make the opportunity, to take, make the time to see them perform again. Did you get now? And for my for the call for action of the comments, if if you got to see maybe if you got to see um, Band Made on this tour, or if you had a chance to see Baby Metal or any other uh, Japanese um, hard rock bands that you would like to recommend, please post in the show notes below. I'm always looking for more music recommendations for groups that are worth seeing live. 
Um, for those who may be listening to my the Anime Explorations podcast, going watching Bochi the Walk has inspired me and pushed me to to go see more live music. And so I'm looking for stuff to see. And that's probably why I got freaking bands in town set up, uh, accounts set up so I can find uh, more music to listen to. In any case, thank you all very much for watching the show, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.